Hi. Yesterday, Geranolog posted a Tech Thursday video. It's the first in a series. And I'm very happy that he does something like that because I think it will be very interesting to, well, learn some, well, interesting behavior of certain modules. And while I can show you things that I discover, it's, of course, very interesting to learn some tricks from the people who are most closely involved with uh, designing these. It's a bit of an awkward situation here with this camera. Um, I'm still figuring out a better way to mount it. The patch that uh, Joran demonstrated to us yesterday involved Step 8. And it uses the stage input, or as he calls it, the analog input, to change the length of the sequence of step 8. Now there's a lot going on, but the only thing that you need to keep in mind right now is that I'm using the scan output for the main melody and routing it through a quantizer and from there it's melted with a slight interval to two generate threes and this is what we're listening to. There's some self-patching going on on the highest pitched one to create this kind of soft wave folded uh, variations. To create sequences of different lengths, Joran used a static voltage, well, not a static voltage, but he used a manual offset patched into the stage input. But what makes it really uh, possible is patching the first gate output back into the reset input here. And this makes it so that whenever step 8 reaches its first step, it gets reset, and you might think then, hey, it will just go back to the first step and reset again. Now, apparently, whenever you patch something into the stage input, after getting a reset signal, step 8 first looks at what voltage is coming into the stage input, and it tries to go back to the stage of step 8 dictated by this voltage and that's why if you send in a voltage here and you reset at the first step it might go back to well it might go back to the first step or to the second step or any other step depending on the voltage the higher the voltage the further the step now instead of using a separate module to patch that static voltage. I'm just going to use the stage output of step 8 itself. Now, as I said, this is very awkward anyway. So now the third stage here is dictating to where step 8 resets whenever it goes from the final, the eighth step to the first one, whenever it has finished, finished. It's like spinach, but finished, no. Whenever it has finished uh, its uh, steps. So after the eighth step, it wants to go back to the first one. But that triggers a reset gate, and then it looks at, hey, what's the voltage at the stage input, and it goes back to that one. For the moment, this is step or stage four. Now you can see if I increase the voltage, the length of the sequence gets shorter and shorter. You turn it completely down, we just get the eight steps. Now, of course, because I'm using one of the stages of step 8, 
this also influences the melody that we are getting out. But I think that's the most important thing about modular anyway. That certain things start interacting and sometimes it's in ways that you cannot really predict. For me, that's really the beauty of a modular system uh, compared to a regular um, subtractive synth architecture. Now, instead of using um, the manual offset of the third stage here, I want to use a stepped random. Now I'm using an output of Pamela's new workout for this. It's just really convenient. It only sends out positive voltages, so that's really good for the stage input. And because I have divided down the speed of this stepped random quite a lot, actually, it changes the length of the sequence periodically, but it also leaves some time to let us enjoy the new melody. And well, I think it's really interesting to start shortening sequences. It's something that's a very popular trick in Acid, like to use uh, six step sequences uh, over a drum beat that follows the regular 16 step pattern. But changing the length of a sequence within a fixed grid or drum pattern really gives the melody a completely different feel. Well, at least that's how I feel about it. Now let's introduce some uh, bass drum. can already start to notice what I'm talking about. Let's add some additional percussion. Now I want to add a little bit of extra random, or I should say chaos, to this uh, patch. So I will be using Orbit 3 to send into the regular signal input on step 8. So the sequence that it produces will always change depending on the voltage that we are sending in. I'm offsetting the output of Orbit 3 with bias 2, so it's strictly positive, so we're not getting these negative voltages for our pitch sequence. Which is entirely okay and possible, but for this patch I don't want it. I'm also dividing the voltage by 2, just so it's a bit less extreme. So let's patch that in and listen to how it sounds. Now if I switch 
the mode here on step 8 to track, you will start to hear that, well, the behavior of the stages of step 8 changes. And because the timing of my quantizer is not linked to anything at the moment, it just takes everything that's coming in and it tries to make a voltage of it that makes sense in the scale that I set it up, which is just a pentatonic scale like the black keys. But if I now constrain the tempo at which it's uh, allowed to sample the notes to quantize them. And this has nothing to do with the step 8 patch, this is just some quantizer um, trick. Now you can hear that sometimes these little trills or runs are allowed to get through, which I find very cool. As you can hear, changing up uh, the drum pattern to something that's not strictly four to the floor can really change the feel of, well, the complete patch once again. This is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this, well, kind of follow-up to Joe Analog's uh, Tech Thursday post. See you next time. Bye.